Good morning, my friends of democracy, free speech, and human rights. I uh, hope everything is okay with you. And uh, it's time for a little report from Sweden again. Uh, got my NOCO BCAA pair. Fucking awesome. Uh, and on my way to the gym. So excuse my dress today. It's the sun is shining. It's a brilliant winter day. And uh, hopefully uh, you will find this video quite informative. Uh, as some of you might have seen, uh, you can no longer find me on Facebook. Uh, and the reason for that is that I have received threats to my workplace and uh, to my home from uh, quite uh, aggressive left-wing groups and uh, members of different left-wing parties uh, that's threatening to come down and destroy or damage the, the workplace I work at uh, and also uh, co inflict damage on myself. So uh, for uh, some time now I will have my Facebook closed. It will be active uh, in a short time but I need things to yeah, turn, turn a little different way here in, in Sweden, and it's, also, it's starting to, as I said before. But um, the reason why I uh, shut down my Facebook is also that I have been uh, exposed on different uh, pages on social media where people are uh, accusing me for being a racist, a bigot, uh, etc. And uh, when they are confronted about this, mostly from immigrants themselves or uh, people from the Middle East, actually, Syria, Turks, uh, they are deleting their uh, posts with, because they are defending me. And they are telling them that Martin is not fucking racist, he's just saying it the way it is. But in uh, the left-wing parties and some feminist groups, I'm considered very racist. And uh, that's actually the topic of this video. Um, who is a racist in Sweden today? Uh, when I grew up, uh, a racist was someone who disliked a person because of the color of their skin. Who saw themselves to be superior because they were white. Um, of course, there are some racists still in Sweden, as there are in many other parts of the world and across all the different polit political parties. But uh, a racist today, according to the left wing and the feminazis, uh, are someone who wants to protect uh, it, uh, the country's border, who wants to know what people walking around on the streets, what people are working in their schools uh, with their kids, uh, who cares about the citizens of their country, the elderly, the young, the sick, uh, the homeless, who wants the police force to work, the hospital care to work, the daycare, the school system and have everything working there for the population in the country. Uh, also, someone who thinks that people who really need asylum, like women and children, uh, people from war-torn countries, they should be handed asylum first. Not anyone who feels like coming here under false identity or false circumstances. That's a racist in Sweden today. Someone who uses common sense, that see no difference in color, and also someone who cares about democracy, women rights, that considered uh, women from Middle East who comes here and have to wear the nikpa, who have to have the, 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 the scarves, that have fled from oppression and still are being oppressed here in the West world. Um, 
that's a racist today. That's how fucked up Sweden has become. Because of some small left-wing groups and parties who who right now has a very big influence in Sweden politics. Um, Here in the West, uh, I don't really understand why we have radical feminists. Because as I see it, women here are allowed to do whatever a man is allowed to do. You are free to work. You're free to go out, you're free to drive, you're free to party, you can go dressed as you like. You are allowed to earn money and you mostly make the same as men if you work as hard as them. If you have a 9 to 6 or 7 to 5 job, you're not going to be successful. And the women who are successful, they are working 24-7. Just ask a successful businesswoman how they work. And you're going to say they're not going to say they lay on the couch. They are not taking care of the children. They have done some decisions. But still they want to import or allow people who has a very twisted view on equal rights, who see women as a lower being, especially gay people but they blame all the white men for it I have never seen a white man ever demand a woman to wear a nikpa I have never seen a white man tell a woman that she are not allowed to drive a car because she's a woman But still, I am the guy who's to blame. I'm the racist. I'm the bigot. Because I care about human rights, women rights, gay rights. And I don't judge a person on their color of their skin, but on their behavior and what they do. Like I said before, right now, The Swedish police are using code 291 or R291 to file all crimes committed by asylum seekers at asylum homes. Only this winter we had 873 cases of physical abuse and beatings at asylum centers. 873 only at asylum homes. And then we don't take in consideration the rest of the communities. And in a country of Sweden, where we have nearly now 10 million people living, we only have a police force of 20,000. So let's say these thousand beatings takes thousand cops to handle. 1,000 out of 2,000, that's quite a big percentage of the complete task force. And let's also see the police. You have the biggest police forces in in Malmö, Gothenburg and Stockholm. In uh, one country, community or what you call it, uh, state uh, named Jämtland, you have two police officers and one car controlling the entire area. That's an area the size of, let's say, Stockholm altogether. And people wonder why the police don't have time to solve crimes. It's now time for politicians to start caring about Sweden. To start caring about the population that is here. All the people who have come here for the last 40 years and who now are in 55 no-go zones. If Sweden's politicians cared so much about immigration and asylum seekers, there would be no 55 no-go zones where the police don't want to go because there are hostilities and they have their own laws. 
If Sweden's politicians cared about Sweden and its citizens, you wouldn't see senior citizens living on the streets. You wouldn't see 60,000 homeless people on the streets. You wouldn't see young people taking their lives or taking other people's lives in order to get the help they need. If Sweden's politicians cared about Sweden and its population, it wouldn't be nearly one million unemployed people, where 80% almost is of Middle Eastern or Eastern European heritage. It's not the Swedes that are unemployed. It's people with an other background than Swedish that has not come into the society, who has not learned the language because the Swedish politicians don't fucking care. We have a fucking prime minister who stands in India in front of million viewers and a massive crowd and says, Hello world, Namaste. The eyes are now on China. Oh, sorry, India. It used to be on China. This is... Um, this is bad. This is really bad. And... Um, we have to have a re-election soon, because right now we have two small parties. The, the left-wing party and the Milieu Parti, the environmental party. Uh, they got like four or six percent in the election and they are still the two, con- the two parties who are running the, this country. So this, is, uh, this has to end. This has to stop. Over 6,000 reported crimes with code 291. That's, as I said, that's only crimes committed by asylum seekers at asylum homes or migrants. I don't care that we have a lot of other crimes in a society as drunken driving, tax fraud, etc. This is 6,000 vicious crimes. It's rapes, it's stabbings, it's assaults, assaults with deadly weapon, it's attempted murder. The list goes on and on. This is not penny theft. This is not drunken driving. This is not evading taxes. This is not pickpocketing. This is hard crimes. But still some defend it and said, well, Swedes commit crimes too. Well, okay, so let's import more criminals then. That sounds fair. (sighs) Fucking stupid Swedes. Have a great day, all. Bye.